so hello everyone today we have with us a amazing personality her name is shrovana de she is from construction engineering 2024 pass out batch please give a brief introduction about yourself hello everyone my name is shrovana de and i passed uh, i graduated from construction engineering if uh, in the batch of 2024 and i am bound to join idfc first bank as an associate data analyst yes so Hello. today i will be sharing my journey with you yes uh, we are very glad to have you in our channel so starting from the beginning exactly from your early days during school life how what kind of student you were please share something about that were you a very studious person what kind of interest did you have in your school days well i was not the smartest kid and i never thought that i would be starting well i would be doing engineering okay. i just wanted a job i never thought about college i just skipped to the job part mm -hmm. anyway so uh, in my class 10 uh, my result was quite good because of which uh, my school decided to allot me science okay. we also had this screening test i had studied in bharatiya vidya bhavan and we have this thing called screening test okay. so after screening test you get some rank based on which you get science commerce and arts Okay. so i had scored decently and i was allotted uh, science now uh, initially i did not have any knack for coding or computer so i did not opt for that subject okay. i had opted for biology instead okay so at the back of my mind i had also thought maybe i would be giving neat as well but anyhow uh, i decided not to appear for neat i appear uh, i decided to appear for je only Okay. Uh, my class 12 result was nice, but the first time I appeared for JE main, my result was not satisfactory. Web G result was also not that good. Hence, I decided to give a year drop and appear for both exams again. Okay. The next time, uh, the situation improved, and well, after decentralized counseling, I got uh, construction engineering in Jadavpur University. Now. There were a number of reasons of choosing this branch. One being it's close to my house, and uh, if I chose this branch, then I and my twin sister would be studying in the same okay. college. These two were the main reasons of choosing. Okay. Uh, well, that's it. So you got admission in construction in in India. Did did you have any previous idea about what this branch is all about and anything about that, like that? well uh, initially during the counseling uh, i did not have a very clear idea about the number of branches that's uh, taught in jadavpur university or the specifications of the branches during the counseling i got to know about uh, that there are 16 branches so i got to know that uh, they teach production engineering they teach food technology printing engineering construction engineering power engineering these engineering uh, these type of streams are not taught everywhere so i was not aware about this okay. but during the time of counseling i got to know about it and then uh, i started digging more then i got to know that uh, the salt lake campus jadavpur university salt lake campus it's a rather a new campus it was started in 1989 uh and how surprising it is i used to pass by this place uh, very mm -hmm. often but i never noticed yes so it happens uh, i got to know about this branch during counseling all right all right so after you got admission in construction engineering in first year what kind of things you explored in the beginning that time it was covid time so how was the environment that time you weren't uh, 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 going to college that time online classes how was it everything that time so uh, initially uh, we are 2020 to 2024 batch but our classes started during uh, 2021 uh, i remember january 1st 2021 they declared the Uh, decentralized hmm. results and we uh, allotted and started our classes hmm. so initially we had this uh, induction and then our classes started during the induction i got introduced to the various aspects that you can explore by staying hmm. in the department uh, during that time i got to know that in the first year we have common syllabus yes so it was common for everyone we used to study subjects like physics chemistry basic electrical basic electronics i do not believe that these subjects except for cpnm any of the subjects uh, 
is beneficial to any student uh, at least uh, that's what i felt especially since it was during the online and we had uh, this 24 hours to submit our uh, answer scripts during the semester 1 so we had ample time to relax and write it was not a proper examination so we oh, did yes. not learn oh. and we did not have any semester examination in sem 2 and we had only 3 month long semester for semester 2 so yes. then again we did not learn anything as such but one thing i really learned was uh, during the cpnm classes i that was the first time i explored coding yes. properly that okay. was the time i learned about arrays strings data structures so that was my first interaction with coding all right then uh, in second year first sem our uh, departmental subject started yes i found that very enjoyable i liked those subjects because they were a bit yes. easy so uh, so you found that third, third semester subjects easier than first year subjects uh first year to be honest i did not study anything so i cannot comment yes obviously. but i found them useless okay except for maths and cpnm i found them mostly useless yes, yes. for uh, cpnm i would say numerical methods is something that is going to come back later in your life yes, as well and yes. it's a very helpful subject as yes. for the second year first sem the subjects were departmental and these were the subjects that uh, you know decided the foundation okay, of yes. the course so uh, whatever subjects we would study later on is an extension of these basics so the basics was made during the third semester fourth semester so after that you uh, went on to explore more subjects so i will come to your next steps in your college later now first of all i want to ask you about many such things like many people have this confusion what exactly is construction engineering and how it is different from civil engineering so please say something about this okay so this is a very interesting question uh, this is something that you would be asked in any and every interview yes obviously and this is something that you have to justify to your relatives who will not understand of course yes so construction engineering and civil engineering uh, you can say civil engineering is kind of a sub branch of uh, sorry construction engineering is a sub branch of civil engineering most of the subjects that are considered uh, foundational subjects like structural engineering strength of material concrete technology design of structure theory of structure these are these subjects are taught both in in both the streams and they are uh, syllabus is not uh, much different yeah. difference starts appearing after you enter into fourth year uh in the fourth year the department both the departments offer you various electives now these electives range uh, these electives include different subjects the number of electives that are present in civil engineering are much more as compared to construction engineering in construction engineering i think that is a limitation but the for civil engineering at least uh, in the course of, of jadavpur university you have to draw by hand Yes. Engineering drawing is a very important part of civil engineering and construction engineering. You have to draw draw by hand for almost four years, all the four years. But what happens in case of construction engineering is that you are taught much more software related stuff so that you can do that drawing using computer. You can do that drawing and analyze it uh, using computer software. It is also taught in civil engineering, but I believe. in construction engineering it is taught at a you know more in depth okay uh, we are also taught softwares like ms project we are taught uh, softwares like stad much uh, i think a, a more uh, elaborate manner so it is about the subject difference but is a construction engineer different from a civil engineer means uh, after someone gets passed out from engineering is is construction engineering treated as separate or is it almost similar to civil engineering construction engineering is similar to civil engineering if you look at the syllabus the you know uh, almost 97% of it is same 97 98% of it is same but uh, in construction engineering 
subjects that are taught to you uh they make you better at execution at the site mm. they make you better in execution that is why what happens is that these companies have a preconceived notion that a construction engineer is not very good in design they are better in site rules mm. but that is not true we are both the departments are taught subjects related to design very well yes so they uh, basically uh, after an undergraduate uh, completes the course and is put to the in, uh, put out into the industry the knowledge of a civil engineer and a construction engineer is almost similar almost because similar. the foundations are similar the foundational yes. subjects that are taught that is what you need in the industry that is same for both the departments yes. so uh, technically they are not very different but they are also not the same yes. they are not identical all right all right so now let's discuss about what kind of scope you have from construction engineering first of all what are the higher study scope from construction engineering in india as well as in foreign okay so uh, there are uh, i myself uh, would like to admit that i was not opting for placements initially i was thinking of going for masters abroad hmm. now uh, after construction engineering you can go for any sort of higher education be it masters in your core subject abroad in india or for management related subjects like in cat or uh, you know the, the general options that open up after engineering take okay, all, all the options open up but uh, if you are hoping to do masters in india then if you are going for uh, gate then you have to appear for uh, the paper in civil engineering and environmental engineering mm -hmm. uh, there is no separate paper for construction engineering okay. but the syllabus is ample enough for you to be able to ace either of the exams there are okay. quite a few uh, graduates from our department who are, are now faculties of iits who are now studying in iits who are doing okay. research work in their okay. in abroad uh, you know in ms uh, masters of science that is uh there is a lot of scope if you want to do uh, research related in a uh, masters in uh, any college abroad then i think it is department gives you with ample opportunity for doing that so uh colleges abroad do not exactly care the department you belong from what they prefer to understand is the knowledge that you have care, uh, garnered over the last 4 years and uh, they want to understand that you have any sort of research exposure or not mm. there will not be any issue in india or in abroad uh, regarding your department there will not be any issue that you come come from construction so why should we uh, take you why should we not take so will this kind of situation is not going to happen right. in higher education there is no no bias so many juniors have this question that if someone wants to study in abroad how can he or she apply for that how to get that without giving gre exam without giving gre so uh, firstly if you want to study abroad there is one very important exam that you have to give that is ielts or toefl that is your english evaluation so mm -hmm. everyone has to give it because you are aiming for abroad right mm -hmm. now as an engineer there are some countries that you can aim for includes uh, us germany mm. then switzerland uh, i think everyone's uh, ma journey to application in abroad is very unique uh, mm. just because i said that germany is good doesn't mean that it is good for you obviously whichever subject that you want to do masters in you should be very uh, well aware about its scope and you should be aware of what exactly the course wants from you as well because let's say uh, you have done masters in uh, you you have done bachelors in civil engineering but uh, you want to shift to the mechanical domain mm -hmm. let's say uh, you want to shift to uh, aerospace domain in that case uh, there will be interviews with your professor there would be interview so you have to be knowledgeable enough to ace that interview so that you get selected Obviously. what happens in case of abroad is that you have to start applying to colleges colleges have different application mm -hmm. period usually different criteria also 
yes the application criteria so some colleges in europe do have a criteria for your gpa yes in I mean, colleges related to us there is no hard and fast uh, gpa criteria except for a few colleges so you need to be well aware about the college profile also now another thing is that uh, students should not apply to a particular college just by looking at the qs world ranking obviously okay. obviously you when should many factors. Uh, look into the colleges you should look into the departments you should look into the kind of research work that is happening you should look into the kind of placements that is happening obviously. you should look consider other factors as well like uh, studying abroad might sometimes become very costly especially if it is in the us Yes, so yes. would you be able to afford it or not and if you can't afford it then what kind of scholarships you can get then uh, what kind of loans you can go for these things uh, are uh, you really need to put in consideration one uh, good habit if you want to go abroad for your higher education is to try to bag internships abroad in research field yes Uh, that helps you to get an exposure. That helps you to understand whether or not you would be able to survive in that kind of condition. In yes. that kind of a lot of conditions, uh, like there is difference in work culture, there is difference in study culture, there is difference in climate. Yes. All these factors, uh, whether or not it sits well with you, you yes. need to understand. So, uh, Dad, Charpa, these are very good, uh, you know, platforms that you can try. Uh, applying for this, uh, getting uh, a semester, uh, getting internships abroad, uh, spending summers that's three or two or three months abroad would give you some clarity on whether yes. you are ready for it or not. Even if you are not able to bank, that does not mean it's the end of the story. It is not. Yes, all right. Doing all right. research within India also is quite helpful if you get ample research exposure. You can apply for IITs. Yes. You can apply for NITs. You can apply for Sheep Pool. You can apply within within Jadavpur also. So does so all does all IIT each and every IIT accept uh, construction engineer if he or she clears civil gate? Yes, uh, all IITs accept. They do not have some criteria like you're from civil engineering. We even uh, construction engineer we won't accept you. They don't have any criteria. All, all right. So this is they a very. They are mostly big... concerned with your uh, rank. they are mostly concerned with your academic background that is how you have scored in your class 10 12 and your during the course work then yes. uh, some iits also have examinations all, all right so it is a not a very big problem if you are from construction engineering you can do higher studies in any kind of university all across the world so let's ca- come to a different chapter about the placement uh, perspective First of all, let's talk about how is the government job scope from construction engineering. Please share. So, uh, in government sector, there is a bit of a setback if you're coming from construction engineering background. Not every PSU allows construction engineering to sit. They also do not allow the specialized branches like instrumentation engineering, transportation engineering, mm-hmm. production engineering. some pcs have specifically uh, some pcs specifically mention that only these people from these specific branches can apply but uh, sometimes uh, those issues can be overcome uh, the department of construction engineering here in jadavpur university gives you something known as equivalent certificate okay. the equivalent certificate specifies that the course work and the subject is aligned in a way that we are as knowledgeable as in civil engineering student so that is issued from the department sometimes presenting that helps initially what was happening is that in ntpc uh, they were not accepting construction engineering but producing this equivalent certificate this problem was solved so now uh, now they are allowing now they are allowing initially there used to be a lot of problem regarding this but uh, with year on year this uh, situation is improving as more and more pcs more and more mm. government uh, departments are opening up to mm. specialized branch of construction engineering so the government so, uh, places like ongc then rail these uh, eil these allows departments all departments to apply so it will not be a very it is not a problem and also one can give ies exam also from construction 
one can give i is exam now in this scenario i have to mention this that uh, a pass out senior of ours 2019 batch promit yes. dev molik yes. scored air 2 in yes. ias exam so he is currently working in uh, railways railways so it is anyone amazing, can it, it is a amazing uh, achievement for him so it's an amazing feat is an amazing feat yeah. really like right? because uh, exams were not online back then it was offline, was offline yeah, completely no offline you had to prepare for it yeah. he also had a very good score in class Yes. He maintained his class studies and his competitive exam preparation. So whoever says that you need to, you know, give away your class work, you just need to focus on gate, you just need to focus on competitive exam, they are not presenting you the clear picture. All right. So if someone from construction engineering gets a decent enough gate score, so he or she will have some PSUs to apply for sure. Uh, so. Sure, so they will have some pieces to apply for. Now, next step uh, depends on how well your interview goes. Yes, all that is also important. But he or she will have this opportunity. Some people say that construction um, doesn't even allow. So this is this is not true. So it is clear that now. That is not uh, yes. the whole picture. Yes, uh, yes. There are quite a few pieces that do apply, and uh, they on. I'm like I'm saying year on year the situation is improving. Improving. More and more pieces are allowing. Yes, so situation is getting improved. So after that, now please uh, share something about the private sector. How is the on-campus opportunity in core civil and construction engineering field? So uh, to be honest, uh, if you are aiming for a very high package and you think that package is what okay. describes my <laughs> job, uh, then I think you are up for a heartbreak because. Yes. uh core sector does not pay you a lot but with experience with exposure with proper guidance you would be able to secure a much better package with uh, see uh, the thing about core sector and it sector is that your skill set is different it is not expected from an undergraduate to know a lot about what's going on inside a building uh, about its health or well whether or not it will fail mm. you are just taught the basics in undergraduate you have to learn with your eyes you have to learn uh, by you know experiencing things you have to learn by being in part of projects mm. and that is not exactly the case of it where you can rather learn some skills just sitting at home mm. so obviously your knowledge is different your you can be very knowledgeable uh, in it sitting at home practicing dsa mm. but that is not same for civil engineering yeah. you cannot just look at a building and say that oh no this is damaged this will fail for that you need experience with experience you would just be able to look at it and monitor and analyze it that here is the problem there is a crack this is the reason do this then this won't happen With so experience you get so, so many many people have this misconception that civil and construction core jobs are so much less paying than any other field so they get generally demotivated by that so what would you like to say about this core sector itself is very underpaying i would say uh you would be able to get around 6 to 7 lpa if you are going for a good company but then again there are companies like bechtel Yes. Samsung Engineering, SCL, who pay around eight or nine. There yes. are companies like ICICI, Mortgage Valuation Role that value. pays around eleven point four LPA. So, uh, if you think that I would be getting a very high package, then you are wrong. But if you think I would be getting only very very low package, that is also wrong. That is also the wrong. first CTC that is disclosed to you during the placement process is the amount of money you would be getting during your GET or Graduate Engineering mm. Traineeship. Yes. So scenarios change after your traineeship. Now company to company this traineeship varies. It might be for 6 months, it might be for 1 year. After that you are placed in a particular department and according to your performance uh you get raise, you get appraisals. Appraisals initially won't be very immediate or won't be very significant, but it would be significant enough to give you uh you know proper uh, progress. With time you would be realizing that uh civil engineering construction engineering does not have a retirement age yes. the most uh, 
funny thing about this uh, sector is that you won't never retire because you're only getting better with experience with experience with experience what once one can IT with with experience that, one can uh, achieve very big feats but in the starting salary people already always judge by the starting salary so that is obviously not the uh, right that way to is judge wrong. i mean yes. you should definitely look into the profile that you're getting hired for you should look into the scope of the company you should look into uh, how big of a brand it is and kind of opportunities you would be getting to learn because yes. as an undergraduate you know nothing in the industry obviously obviously so uh, i would like to ask you that please give a approximate percentage how much percentage uh, civil engineering core companies allow construction engineering in the last few years so uh, see this year a lot of core companies came uh, during placements and out of it there were around five or six that did not allow i'm talking about 50 plus companies that came for core only 50 plus and around came. only five or six did not allow and that is the case for most what happens during on campus placements is that uh, the companies have may have not all companies have may have this idea that uh, construction engineering people are only for side jobs civil engineering people are for design and site jobs mm -hmm. so some companies do not allow us to sit for site uh, design related roles but mm -hmm. on negotiation on telling them uh, about our curriculum about telling them about similarities in the course mm -hmm. and differences in the course very often these companies get pursued to allow us because they realize oh they are studying the same thing so why will they be different so most companies allow there are you know approximately you can say like five or six percent companies that do not allow now people would be highlighting those five or six companies if five or six percent of the companies only but that's not a true picture a person uh, who is good in design would definitely get a job in design role if you have ample knowledge if you are able to clarify all of their rounds and able to perform well in the interview yes obviously so so core sector job uh, is not a very big issue in construction in engineering with experience one can increase his or her salary in the future so this year a large number of students have opted for core related placements mm -hmm. now uh, last year placement scenario was very nice this year also i'm very happy to say that almost 97% of the uh, yes. people have been placed and a huge number of them have gotten placed in core industries. Yes. Uh, even though a large number of those people are in site role, but uh, there are a few in design role as well. And they are all bound to join during July. One good thing about core is that you, the joining will not be deferred. Yes, so yes. that's a plus. That, that is a plus thing. So 97% placed is a literally amazing thing for any kind of department from any college. So it is definitely a very... uh, given uh, the kind of recession we had this yes. year, very few companies actually came up, uh, to be honest, but a huge number of core companies also did That's come so up. Uh, if you look at the scenario in other departments, I would say construction has fared better. Right. In fact, all core departments have somehow fared better. Yes, yes. this year it is been a recession in the in the non core sector. So, all right, so now let's come to the main thing of this video about your placement journey so you started your first corporate journey from third year first so during third year it was intensive season so please share a brief about the internship season first so uh, like i had mentioned previously initially i was not thinking of opting into placements i was more okay. interested in getting into masters so I decided to build my research, uh, you know, oriented profile. So that's why I started applying in different IITs. I started cold mailing the professors to get an internship for the summer of third year, mm. uh, the summer that we get after 3.2, mm. that is. So I had backed a research internship at ISM Dhanbad All right, uh, through the SRIP program. So uh, I had done research there for two months i had done uh, thankfully thanks to that research i got a chance to visit iit bombay for a poster right. presentation my mentor was amazing uh, 
my mentor dr alok was amazing uh, so i got a very good uh, exposure in there so after returning to kolkata so what, what subject to, what subject did you do research intern on uh, in uh, in ism dhanwad i did research uh, under the department of environmental science and engineering uh that is a sub class of civil engineering hmm. so my work was related to arsenic removal in underground water all right all right using a natural process called soras so okay. it was it was a good journey okay now so, uh, i had presented the uh, poster hmm. presentation was regarding this only okay so after coming back uh i started looking at uh, opportunities that i can avail I realized that I might not be ready for going into a, you know research field. I was not ready to go for gate, so mm. I did not prepare for it, and I was not ready to appear for it either. And uh, somehow I was a bit insecure regarding my research profile. I was somewhat thinking it's not ample enough, so I was hesitant to apply for colleges abroad or to appear for ILTS. So mm -hmm. I did not do that either. So I was just buying myself some time. I decided to let's try placements. So okay. I started looking for research opportunities like that. So initially, since I had not searched about how to go about this, I was not very knowledgeable regarding this. Uh, but uh, thanks to a personal contact, I got chance to uh, have a research internship as a business analyst at Mulo Technologies. So I did internship for about three months there, and thanks what, to that internship. What was the location? I, on where did you go for that? Uh, it was a remote location. Uh, it was remote, so I did okay, not. Okay, it was online, so that is. It was nice. remote, uh, and the experience, whole experience, gave me a taste of corporate life. So. Yeah. Uh, that really prepared me for the placement season. The timings were very mm. flexible, yes. so it did not hamper with the course curriculum either. Mm. We were allotted works that we had to deliver within a fixed time period, so it was it was nice experience doing that. And I believe that this internship was very important for my IDFC interview because they would constantly be asking about what you learned. how you learned that and how it is important in this journey of yours so the placement season started from the fourth year in the seventh semester it started so what was the first company you sat for the placement and how it was the experience please share uh see there were a few companies that i had sat for during the internships mm. uh during the placement season of 2023 of quite a few company came for internship for the 2024 batch as well hmm. but uh, since i had already bagged ism i did not appear for it a lot okay. but i am aware of the processes of those companies so hmm. i knew that even in placements you would be having this oa you would be having uh, case study rounds interviews things like this so i was not completely unaware but i was not that much uh, involved Okay. So IDFC is the first company that I had sat for, mm. and it's the first interview that I gave, okay. and luckily I got it also. So right. uh, throughout the placement season, I only appeared for one company. All right. So first of all, it was the way. So uh, way consists of what kind of questions? Say briefly. For IDFC, first the way is not very difficult. Anyone who is preparing uh, aptitude. Uh, mm. LRDI and English verbal from CAT, past year CAT papers would be able to crack mm -hmm. it easily. Mm -hmm. uh, I would suggest everyone to practice from past year CAT paper so that you uh, you know develop that speed. Yes. Uh, the OA was not very difficult, but uh, it depended a lot on speed, how okay. fast you saw. Obviously. Another thing that uh, was mentioned in IDFC is that there would be CV based shortlisting. along mm. with the oa and uh, somehow i okay. yes yeah, somehow i felt that uh, they had preferred candidates with a higher gpa more oh that is a thing and uh, even though sir no one would actually be pointing this out to you but uh, companies prefer people with higher class 10 class 12 marks and a good uh, cgpa in graduation they do mm. prefer 
especially right. companies coming in the initial phases initial phases so after that oa you got your interview call so please share your interview experience what they asked you so uh, the interview happened uh, I did. I forgot the date. Anyways, the uh, within about a week, we got call for uh, the interview. Uh, there were 800 people who had appeared for the OA. Something around 800 because okay. all the departments were allowed. Okay. So everyone uh, appeared for it. So uh, after that, 32 people were selected for the interview. Okay. Interview happened in two parts. That uh, HR first uh, round was technical interview followed by HR interview. but uh, to be honest i felt during the hr interview also they were asking technical questions oh, a few technical questions uh, on the day of the interview we had to uh, report at around uh, 9:30 10 am and they were a bit late anyhow they uh, started their interview almost immediately there were four panels out of which three were offline and one was online panel Okay. students were randomly distributed uh, to the panelists each panel consisted of around 3 to 4 people mm -hmm. and the online panel consisted of three individuals who would be taking your interview mm -hmm. i assume the people who were taking interviews were technical people because they asked mm -hmm. very technical questions uh for me what happened was uh, i went in uh, third or fourth i was third or the fourth person to go in for the interview and by that time i was very sleepy and hungry because i mm -hmm. had to report very early okay. so uh, anyhow i at the back of my mind i was thinking that i won't get selected so i was very relaxed i think this is very important because very often people think that i have to get this and they then they become very nervous they are nervous. not able to you know perform well uh, that was not uh, in my case because i was very relaxed because i knew i'm going to get rejected i didn't care so a uh, very important thing that i must mention here is that your appearance matters a lot mm -hmm. when you going for any interview your appearance matters a lot if you don't come in proper iron formals people do judge your yeah, formal okay. should be iron your shoes should be formal not sneakers if you are wearing a belt make sure your clothes are tucked in properly yes. this is also not important for females i would say do not wear a dress to the interview it doesn't look very good okay for boys i say uh, please shave your beard shave your mustache if you want to keep your mustache then trim it properly okay. your hair should not be all over the place it should be you know trimmed properly you should overall be very presentable yes, yes. this is important so what kind of questions they asked in the technical interview share about it In the first interview, uh, I had to face three panelists. All of them were asking questions simultaneously. Okay. So uh, initially, the the questions were CV based. Since I had mentioned that I had knowledge regarding MS Excel, advanced MS Excel, so they were asking questions regarding that only. They did not ask me questions from things I did not know. Okay. They asked questions that were mentioned in my CV. They asked about the personal projects that I had done. using ms excel uh, my personal uh, my uh, experience at mulo technologies they asked about that and questions related to that then uh, for all candidates well, one common thing was that they used to give they gave one guesstimate to okay. solve and pen and paper were provided by them only we just sat down and solved it they did not rush uh, the solution they were like uh, you think you as you approach the question as you approach the answer you explain to us what you're thinking of your next step and why you are taking that step so uh, it was very calm and cool and they all if you did not understand the question they would repeat it if you did not if you wanted to take a minute to yourself they would give it so that was a very friendly interaction then uh, they asked me some very basic probability and permutation combination related questions two or three i believe it was a very simple like in class 10 or 12 you have this sums related to marbles i was asked yes, something yes. like that marbles and balls i was uh, asked similar to that so how how and to prepare the, for this guesstimate guesstimate how one should be prepared for you do not have a handbook to prepare for guesstimates one thing you can do is uh, there is this youtube channel uh, called rodha you can prepare yes. for uh, 
guesstimates there but they, it's, it's not that good for guesstimates you can listen to the guesstimates uh, solved guesstimates that are uploaded in iim lucknow channel uh, yeah. on youtube only okay there are uh, see guesstimates are not very uh, specific type of sums and uh, it can have varied answers what is more important is the approach Yes. If you go to this I am Lucknow channel uh, on YouTube, you would be un understanding that they explain the approach at each step. Obviously. So you can follow that playlist. Uh, in uh, from Rodha, you can practice uh, probability. You can practice this uh, permutation combination. A very important question that they asked me was two puzzles that they had given. I was not able to answer either of them because I had not practiced puzzles. Now. For puzzles, I uh, don't think you need to uh, wander around a lot. You can just uh, study the puzzles uh, of GFG, Jigsaw, yeah, Jigs. Yeah. There are a list of 100 puzzles. Mm. Uh, more or less, all companies ask more or less from their own. Mm. Okay. So they okay. asked me a few questions related to the banking sector, like very basic questions, like common sense related questions. I think they asked me because I had mentioned critical thinking in my CV. Mm -hmm. But any bank can ask you bank related questions like they asked me uh, why, uh, how do banks recover loan? Why do banks give out loans and how do, make, how do they make profit out of it and how to avoid bad loans? Mm -hmm. These are very basic questions that mm -hmm. you can just solve by using your common sense. All right. So first of all, guesstimates, then puzzles and some math like probability. Then they ask about banking questions. Anything else they asked? CV related. CV is very important CV because very important. for all the students who were going and me too, they asked from the personal projects that were mentioned. And they asked about the technicalities of the personal projects, like what kind of tools you have used, why did you use this and not that. If you mention ML, they would be asking questions from ML. From ML if you mention Excel, as in my case, they asked questions from different tools of Excel and how they gave me a small case study, like how would you analyze and which tools you be using to analyze this data if given large data, data in stocks, which graph you would be using, things like this. If you had mentioned e XQL, they would be asking from the same. So there is no specific thing apart from banking questions. There is, there is no specific thing that you have to know this, this technology or this thing for sure. This, there is no fixed. All right. So someone, uh, whatever he or she has. It is in uh, the... important that you know at least one analytical tool. One, uh, one uh, analytical for tool my tool. case, it was uh, MS Excel. For other, uh, some people it was ML. For some people it was SQL. But one analytical tool is important. Oh, all right. This is important. So one analytical tool is important. And some analytical uh, puzzle solving ability. And also some banking knowledge also. So did they ask anything about your core subjects like what kind of research you did or did they ask you about the research internship? I actually had not mentioned my research internship in my CV. Right. The thing is that when you're applying for some corporate company, you should be well aware about what they are wanting from you. In their JD, it felt like they will not entertain a person who has a research internship because they would think this person is going for master's, then why should we hire? Yes, obviously. Like, why waste time? So I did not mention my research internship in there. Uh, I think I should mention this a few, uh, as in case of my would-be colleague. Uh, yeah. He had mentioned in his CV that he had done research internship using ML. So. Uh, he was asked this question that whether or not you would be pursuing master's soon and you're just appearing for it just for the safety. So at that time he said, no, I won't be pursuing master's. But these kind of questions would be coming if you are mentioning your research related internship. So one has to be one has to make a CV according to the company, not anything that he or she did in his life. All right. One so, should study the job description very well to make sure what kind of skills they would be mentioning. Do not exaggerate your CV because they would be asking very specific questions from your CV. If you are not able to justify from it, it means you're lying. All right. So uh, almost every non-core company asks this question that you are from this kind of department. Why you are switching to non-core? What answer you did give? 
this is something that was asked to me during the hr question mm, yes. so around that time i said that uh, i was not exactly uh, inclined towards engineering aspect and i had an act for economics and finance related aspect so when this opportunity came i wanted to explore whether or not i had the ability to make a career in this yes. this was more or less considered an acceptable answer but uh, i don't think this uh, same answer can be used everywhere you should be prepared for a genuine answer what they are looking for is your genuine interest in the company they do not mm. want to waste their time on you obviously obviously that is important so all right so first of all uh, let's give a brief uh, compilation of everything from construction engineering one can uh, do higher studies in both india and as well as in foreign he or she has a good opportunity in government sector also also in private sector in on campus placement he or she will have no problem at all next if one has to crack any analytics company he or she has to uh, crack a uh, sorry he, ha- he or she has to do a analytics tool at least one and also some banking or um, and also some maths it depends on which yeah. kind of company you are going for i mean if you are going for companies like pool star protivity mm. they will not be asking you banking related yes, question yes. they would be asking you analytics related question right. they would be asking you regarding your projects and how you did it what you did it what how will you analyze this certain set these kind of questions uh, another question that uh, happened during my hr round was that they were asking me Uh, they asked me to solve a permutation combination related question they asked me to solve a probability related question and then they asked me why am i choosing their company this mm-hmm. question is something that each and every company asks their uh, right. interviewees another very important thing is that uh, during interview i was asked regarding some specifics regarding the companies companies uh, they asked me like uh what is different in idfc first bank what is the history of idfc first bank was it merged or was it a bank from the very beginning things okay. like this so studying about the company you are applying for is important uh, yes. please go through the website before applying these kind another of things another question uh no, no no continue another question they asked me during the hr interview uh was a case study that was uh, related to some financial aspect only uh, they asked me uh, about pre approved loans they it was kind of a trick question where they were trying to judge my quick thinking mm. so you should be ready to face any sort of question you uh, this is not uh, something that is mentioned in textbook anywhere that you would be able to answer but you should be quick enough to think of an answer even if it is wrong yes. so as a whole if one has to crack an analytics company he or she has to be smart enough to handle any kind of question so that is more one thing that uh, they also notice is your uh, for online interview they did not because they had their face hidden but mm. i had to share my face mm. so one thing they did uh, during that time they did not notice your eye movement but during the one on one interview that i was having in the technical round mm. they noticed my eye movement a lot uh in fact they wanted to make sure that i made eye contact with them they specifically said another thing i should mention that uh, in whatever cv that you're making you should not uh, have a picture of yourself in the cv the cv that i took to idfc had my picture on it and the person who was taking my interview they specifically said that whatever you have done this time it's okay it's it's uh, you're just a child but make sure in the next companies you should not um put a picture of yourself yes another thing is that sometimes companies may ask that do you have any question for from our end do you have any question for mm, us yes, yes. so during that uh, time you should not say no i don't have any question because you do not know a- everything about the company you should say yes i do have a question and then ask anything on spot do not memorize these kind of question beforehand then it feels very mocked up it feels very unnatural Yes. ask any questions you might be having like i had asked regarding their gender ratio so okay. can oh. uh, definitely ask uh, these kind of questions this is something that is not asked often so they were uh, kind of shocked and then said why would you be asking this uh, oh. so you should be able to justify why you are asking this questions for me the reason was that 
often it happens that in core sector uh, a female is not preferred especially for site roles so i asked them whether i would be facing the same kind of discrimination in idfc as well to which they said no you will not but the question itself is good oh. they actually gave me that feedback so so this is whichever, important okay you whichever question you are asking you should be able to justify your reason behind it just because you saw somewhere that someone asked i should be asking to be cool no you are not trying to be cool you have to justify every every answer once one uh, says to the interviewer have to be natural so it is more important and the thing you many things you said about the appearance about the cv it was very much valuable for for this many people do not have this kind of idea that there is no kind of book also that uh, if or she studies that and he can crack an interview so this comes with experience and thanks for joining us it was a very nice time it was a very good session and hope uh, some juniors will watch this video and have a good inspiration and also i would uh, i would uh, put the linkedin id in the description if you want to uh, get in touch with her you obviously can uh, contact with her so thanks a lot again thank you